Ladies and gentlemen, the story you're about to hear is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. Take it from me. Sometimes managing a maintenance department in a large company can be pretty exciting. Sometimes you don't want to get out of bed. The other day was one of those days I wished I'd stayed home in bed. I was returning to the office after running around the plant, putting out one fire after the next, when... Oh, where have you been? I've been calling everywhere for you. That's Julie, my secretary. She runs things when I'm not dealing with emergencies. Or at least she tries. Well, you should have been able to reach me. I've been everywhere. Twice. Oh, why? What's the matter? Oh, it's Mr. Big. He wants to talk to you right away. Something about Assembly Line 6. Assembly Line 6 was our main production line. We'd recently scored a large order with a major customer and were working overtime to meet a deadline. Far as I knew, everything was going swell. What could the plant manager want with me now? Maintenance, this is Julie. Yes, sir, Mr. Big. Yes, sir. Uh, he's right here. He just walked in. It's him, Mr. Big, and he's fuming. Eh, don't sweat the small stuff. Let me handle this. This is O'Toole. What's up? What's up? What's down is more like it. You're supposed to keep the machines operating. Are you trying to put us out of business or what? Whoa, whoa, slow down, big guy. Tell me what the problem is. Oh, slow down, you say. That's exactly the problem. We can't afford to slow down. We have an order to fill. We got a deadline to meet, and we're not going to make it with number six shut down. Oh, no. I just heard the most dreaded words a maintenance manager would ever hear. A machine is down. Fatally wounded on the battlefield of corporate competition. Out of commission. Kaput. Snafu. Broken. I could feel my stomach muscles tightening. I had a feeling I wouldn't be having lunch today. Maybe not even dinner. Number six had put me in a fix. I decided to play it cool. So, um, who shut it down? Who shut it down? You mean what shut it down? That's why I'm calling you. Don't you know? I haven't got a clue. I've been working on something else. Well, you better find out. And fast. I want some answers. Uh, what are you doing down there anyway? Watching television? Uh, no, nah, it must be some uh, static on the Whatever phone. it is, meet me at line six in ten minutes and bring some answers, or you'll find a lot more static on your line than you bargained for. I had to do something, and fast. But what? Julie, I need to know what's happened on line six. Where's our records on the history of all the equipment associated with that line? <sighs> Beats me. With all this paper on your desk, it's hard to find anything around here. Well, how about the report showing who's been assigned to that area? Are you kidding? That kind of information is scattered in so many files. I mean, you need a computer to sort it all out. A computer? Are you crazy? Where do you think you are? This isn't accounting or payroll, you know. This is maintenance. What good would a computer do here? Besides, this is no time to start talking about computers. I need some information. Secretly, though, I knew she was right. There just had to be a better way. A more productive way to manage all this work. Uh, if only I could convince the front office to buy us a computer. It's no use. We're never going to find that stuff in time. Uh, okay, never mind that. Call Joe and have him meet me at the site. And Joe's on vacation till next week. Uh, call Harry, then. Harry called in sick today. Well, who's on a low-priority assignment that I can switch to this new job? Uh, I don't know. Look, why don't you check your schedule of work orders? Well, where the heck is it? On your desk somewhere, I think. I don't have a copy, that's for sure. Uh, uh, never mind. Uh, I'll check that line out myself. I grabbed my hard hat and went to find out who or what had thrown a monkey wrench into line six. As I approached line six, I could see the plant manager walking around frantically, directing one of my crew who was lying on the floor next to his toolbox. It didn't look good. It doesn't look good, O'Toole. I grabbed one of your guys on the way over here. He wasn't busy. Don't you people have enough work to do? <sighs> oh, never mind that now. He's checking it out. I couldn't tell by his shoes exactly who was lying under the conveyor belt, so I just asked. So, uh, what's a good word, my man? Uh, sorry, Chief. Uh, no good words here. The motor's seat of solid history, you know. Uh, this here bearing's the root cause of the problem. It's shot. Kaputsky. Uh, looks like it should have been replaced a few months ago. What? Are you telling me that because we didn't replace a lousy 99-cent bearing in time, we ruined a $20,000 motor? Uh, bingo, Chief. Uh, that's about the size of it. O'Toole, would this have happened if this machine had been properly maintained? Uh, probably not. So why hasn't it been properly maintained? When was the last preventive maintenance done? About six months ago. Uh, maybe a year. I can't really say offhand. I'd have to look up the equipment history. <laughs> Good. Then you do have an equipment history. Um, oh, sure. Somewhere. Uh, this downtime is going to cost us, O'Toole, and it's going to cost us plenty. We can't afford to miss this order. How long will it take to get this line up and running? 
Could be three days. Could be two weeks, uh, depending if we have the spare parts on hand or if we have to order them. You mean you don't even know if you have the spare parts? Uh, I'll have to send someone to check the inventory. You spend more than a million dollars a year on maintenance. Last I counted, you had over 20 people in your department. So what's the problem? Why can't you keep on top of these things? Because we're always fighting fires, that's why. Every time we schedule a preventive maintenance, something comes up to screw up our plan. Production always takes priority, so all our schedules go haywire. I'm up to my ears in paperwork. It's practically impossible to keep track of all this stuff without it. Okay, okay, I've heard enough excuses. Assuming you do have the spare parts, how long will this take to fix? Well, I'll have to pull a few men off some other projects, maybe two or three days. Oh, that's too long. You got 24 hours, tops. I need this line in production by tomorrow, or you may soon find yourself pushing a broom in someone else's plant. Do I make myself clear, O'Toole? Crystal clear. Uh, we'll jump on it right away. The rest of that day was a nightmare. I went back to my office, sorted through the work orders, reassigned men to this new emergency, had someone cannibalize another machine for spare parts, and brought in a special clue to work through the night to meet the boss's order. By the time I got home, it was so late, I just crashed on the bed and fell right asleep. All rise. The trial of Custom Made Products Incorporated against its maintenance manager, Chief O'Toole, on the charge of not running an efficient maintenance operation will now proceed. The Honorable Julie Spencer presiding. I recognized that face, th that smile, even in a nightmare. There she was, my secretary, as the judge. There was Mr. Big, my plant manager, as the plaintiff, and sitting next to Mr. Big was the controller, old Penny Pinch himself. Mr. O'Toole. You're the maintenance manager at Custom Made Products, isn't that right? Uh, sure, Julie. Uh, I, I mean, yes, Your Honor. Mr. Avery Big, the plant manager, accuses you of negligence and incompetence in carrying out your duties. How do you plead? Uh, overworked, underbudgeted, and understaffed, Your Honor. I'm sorry, Mr. O'Toole, but that's not a legal excuse. You're either guilty or innocent. I'd say disorganized is more like it, Your Honor. Quiet, please, Mr. Big. You'll get your turn soon. Now, Mr. O'Toole, how do you plead? I knew it was now or never. Mr. Big was looking for a scapegoat for not meeting his production promises. He brought the controller along to back him up. They were cooking something up all right, and I didn't want it to be me. I, I plead for help, Your Honor. Uh, no one can be expected to maintain all the equipment in a busy manufacturing process with the chaotic manual system we have. I it's hopelessly outdated. I'm drowning in paperwork. Uh, besides, most days I feel like I should be wearing a fire helmet instead of a hard hat. All I do is respond to emergencies. I need help, Your Honor. You know that. Oh, that's no defense. You have everything you could possibly need. What more could you want? What kind of help do you need? A computer. Did I hear music? Did you bring a radio with you or something? Uh, no, Your Honor. I object. No computer. And who are you? <clears throat> uh, well, they call me Penny Pinch, Your Honor. I'm the controller. I watch where the money goes, and I say no computer. It's too expensive. It just adds to overhead and eats away at profits. Uh, but, but so does all the loss of productivity due to unexpected downtime, not to mention the inability to keep track of all the costs relating to labor and spare parts inventory. He's right there, Mr. Penny Pinch. Uh, oh, I'm tired of being low man on the totem pole. Maintenance needs a computer just as much as accounting, maybe more so. If we can't keep the machines running, we all might as well pack up and go home. Well, if you put it that way, maybe you can have... A personal computer. Provided, of course, you can justify the expense. <laughs> You're just trying to get off cheap. It won't work. A PC's just too limited. If we were a small company with only a handful of people in the maintenance department, maybe a PC might be okay. If we only needed to track preventive maintenance schedules, maybe a PC might do the job then, too. But I've got over 20 employees, several hundred machines to maintain, and thousands of spare parts to keep track of all at the same time. A single PC just can't do the job. And how do you know that? I've done a little research on my own, and I've seen demos of several products. Hmm, all right. How about if we get two or three PCs and link them together somehow? Won't a few computers be better than one? Uh, that won't do it either. The memory banks are still too small. A PC just can't hold enough data to process all the programs we'd need. Well, what if we connect several PCs together in a network? It doesn't matter how many PCs you link together, you still won't get the power of a larger computer. We need to be able to do several tasks at the same well, time. Wait, 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 hold on there now, O'Toole. You're talking big bucks now. 
maybe a half a million dollars or more. I'm willing to consider that a computer might solve some of your problems, but can you really justify spending all that money in the uh, maintenance department? He would have to ask that question. I was afraid he had me now. In my heart, I knew I could save the company bundles of money and run a more efficient operation with a computer and some good software. But I simply didn't know how I could justify the expense of a computer system. Then... I believe I can help you solve this problem. Who are you? And where did you come from? I'm a sales representative with Hewlett Packard, one of the leading manufacturers of computers and customizable computer software in the world. I've been listening to you describe your maintenance management problem, and I think I have just the right solution for you. It's an easy-to-use, customizable solution that will allow you to reduce maintenance costs and improve productivity significantly. It won't cost anywhere near half a million dollars. And you can justify its nominal purchase price in terms of reduced downtime, increased productivity, and less capital tied up in spare parts inventory. Wow. I don't know where she came from or exactly what she was selling, but to me, she was like a drink of water to a man dying of thirst. I object. On what ground? This salesperson doesn't know anything about our operation. How can she have the right solution for us? Let's listen and find out, shall we? Proceed. Thanks, Your Honor. Well, to answer the objection, I've done a little bit of research about your company. For instance, I know that you're a manufacturing company. Well, yeah, that's right. And that you have an annual maintenance budget of more than $1 million? No, we do. And how many employees do you have in the maintenance department? Uh, over 20. I object. What now? Well, this line of questioning is irrelevant and immaterial. Overruled. It sounds like a perfectly good way to qualify a prospect to me. Proceed. Mr. O'Toole. How do you keep track of your spare parts inventory, your maintenance work orders, and your preventive maintenance schedules? Well, we have records. Oh, what kinds of records? Scraps of paper? Yes. Each one unrelated to the other? Yes. And filed in drawers under names you can't remember? Yes. And piled so high on your desk that you often waste a lot of time just looking for the information you need? Yes, yes, yes. And you, Mr. Big... Does your production department have a high percentage of unplanned downtime, say, over 10%? Well, yes, way too much. And you would like to reduce downtime as much as possible, wouldn't you? Naturally. That's why we're here in a way. And you, Mr. Pennypinch, wouldn't you like to see a better rate of return on all the capital invested in the equipment and inventory needed to make the plant profitable? Are you kidding, lady? I'd be lying if I didn't. Well, Your Honor, it seems to me that this company is a perfect candidate for the computer solution I have in mind. Yes, it would seem so. Well, it doesn't seem so to me. We already have a computer. Do you? Where? In data processing. We use it for accounting and payroll, and for some areas of manufacturing, too. Well, that's great, but, you know, there is a lot more involved in computerized maintenance management than in cost accounting. A whole lot more. In some cases, we've actually seen the maintenance department operate a computer for their own purposes. I object. The computer has always been under my control. Calm down now, Penny Pinch. You can't control everything all the time. Objection overruled. Everything seemed to be going so well, but I had to admit that I did feel a little apprehensive that I could be getting in over my head. After all, I really didn't know much about computers. Neither did anyone on my staff. I turned to the Hewlett Packard sales rep and confessed. You know, it, it sounds pretty nice for maintenance to have our own computer, but the truth is we don't really have any programmers or computer experts. Who will maintain the computer that maintains us? You will. It's easy. No sooner did the words escape from my lips than the Hewlett Packard sales rep disappeared in a cloud of smoke and was replaced by someone else I'd never seen before. Who are you? I'm a software engineer for Hewlett Packard. I'm part of the HP Assist program. I'll help you determine exactly what your technical needs are, and I'll direct the implementation of this system in your plan. I'm still not convinced that this is the right solution for us. Tell me, what makes the HP solution so special? Everything you need to reduce costs and improve productivity is contained in six integrated modules. Equipment catalog, work order control, equipment history, parts catalog, inventory control, and purchase order tracking. Well, that sounds all fine and dandy, but what do these modules actually do? With the equipment catalog, you can keep up-to-date information on every piece of equipment in your plant. You can group equipment that have common features, for instance, all motors, and maintain information which is common to similar types of equipment in one file. Will that help us to keep an eye on preventive maintenance schedules and make sure costs don't get out of control? 
It sure will, since all information is updated online and can be retrieved by any combination of selection criteria, you can keep much better track of preventive maintenance costs and minimize your hours of downtime. What about work orders? How can I keep track of my crew? With the work order control module, you can manage all types of maintenance work. Normal repairs, emergency repairs, preventive maintenance, standing orders, and special projects. Uh, some days it seems like all I do is respond to emergencies all over the plant. I'd like to know how this program would help me deal with emergency repairs more efficiently. The work order module would allow you to respond to emergencies much faster. For example, rather than waste time running all around the plant, you could add a task in your office and have the work order distributed at a remote printer nearest the repair job. Well, what about preventive maintenance schedules? How can we be sure our PMs are not overlooked? You can schedule preventive maintenance by individual or common equipment, according to date, number of hours of usage, or other event criteria, which helps you to reduce unexpected downtime. Well, can we make use of this module to monitor labor costs on work orders? Naturally. You can compare estimated and actual costs on each job you assign. You can even review work orders and tasks online according to a wide range of selection criteria, including technician assigned, a supervisor in charge, equipment location, task, priority, start date, order type, recurrence interval, and several other customizable criteria, which are all updated online. You know, if this program could do all that, I might actually be able to go to lunch sometimes. At least you would have better control over your time. The work order control module optimizes the maintenance manager's time by giving him all the information necessary to schedule and adjust workloads. Those features sure do sound like they could bring about an improvement. Uh, you mentioned something about equipment history. Uh, how does that work? The equipment history module tracks work orders as they impact equipment. As work is completed, repair information such as work order costs, total downtime, and root cause of failure is collected and automatically updated. But how will that help me? In many ways. For instance, you could discover that a certain inexpensive part, like a bearing, uh. which is commonly used in much of your equipment, could be the root cause of, say, a motor failure. Ah! I had to hand it to this character. Judging by the way Mr. Big just reacted, this engineer sure knew how to hurt a guy and make him feel good at the same time. Or by retrieving the names of technicians previously assigned to work on particular equipment, you could make more informed decisions regarding labor assignments. Well, sometimes it's hard to extract any meaning from all this information from a large database. Is there any easy way that we could notice the little problems before they become really big problems? Of course. The system is designed to retrieve information using a wide range of selection criteria. That makes it a lot easier to interpret patterns. How about all those thousands of spare parts they must have on hand? Isn't it difficult to keep track of them all? <laughs> You're right, Your Honor. Keeping track of spare parts is not easy without a computer. But with the parts catalog, it's really quite simple. A list describing each part, the quantity available, the quantity reserved for special projects like preventive maintenance, and the location in the warehouse stocking the part is kept in the computer for quick and easy retrieval. Uh, what if my crew can't remember the exact number of a part? Uh, how could we locate it? No problem. You could search for the part by number, if you could remember it, but really wouldn't have to. You could retrieve the necessary data about a part simply by using a keyword or a vendor's name or even a partial description of the item like... 2 HP for a 2 horsepower motor. Well, compared to your current method of walking from warehouse to warehouse to locate a spare part tool, it sounds like to me you'd save a tremendous amount of time and effort by doing it all online. Mm. No doubt about it. Yeah, well, oh, 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 well, what about inventory control? Along with a parts catalog, the inventory control module tracks inventory balances, identifies locations, and maintains up-to-date information about the available quantities of parts. You can reserve parts to certain work orders to make sure you have what you need to start a job. For example, uh, whenever a technician needs a certain part, he orders it by part number and it is automatically issued to his work order. How do we keep track of the cost involved in filling a work order? And what about the remaining spare parts inventory? The cost of each spare part is automatically added to the work order as the part is issued. When the inventory balance on ordered items falls below the predetermined shortage amount, these items appear on a shortage report, giving you the opportunity to reorder in a timely fashion and thus avoid being out of stock. You know, I, I think I'm even beginning to like this myself. What about purchase order tracking? The purchase order tracking module monitors purchase orders for spare parts. By selecting an order point that triggers the inclusion of an item on the shortage report when supplies fall below the order point, you make sure you order only what you need when you need it. Automatic back order filling ensures that parts are sent to the highest priority order. Marvelous. All these features are wonderful. But such a package with so many benefits must be prohibitively expensive. And since we can't possibly justify the cost, I still object. To what? Why? We just can't afford it. How can you say you can't afford it? You don't even know how much it costs. 
He hasn't told you yet. I don't care. We can't afford it anyway. Anything that has all that capability is something we can't afford. Overruled. On what ground? No sooner had the software engineer disappeared than another character stood in his place. I had no idea who this guy could be. But by this point, I was learning to sit back and enjoy the show. On the grounds that this package can save you much more than it costs and that it really can improve productivity significantly. And who are you? Hey, that's my line. Well, say it then. Well, give me a chance. This isn't exactly my normal day in court either, you know. So who are you, stranger, and what brings you to this dream? I'm a, a Hewlett Packard customer, like Mr. O'Toole here. I manage the maintenance department for a manufacturing company, and I can assure you that buying the HP maintenance management solution has saved my company many times the cost of the system. It's also improved production in ways that are hard to quantify. Hey, 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 are you a shill? Are, are you putting me on? Beg your pardon? This is your case to win. I'm only here to help. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Enough about the things that are hard to quantify. Give me some numbers. Show me how we can justify buying this high-ticket item. Well, first, you can consider your annual savings on reduced unplanned downtime. You can count on at least a 10% reduction there. We did. Then okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. O O'Toole? How much downtime do we have? Uh, hard to say, but I'd estimate we're down at least 100 hours a year. Okay, let's see. 100 hours at about $6,000 an hour, that's $600,000. So if we save 10%, that's $60,000, huh? Not bad. You making a note of this, Penny Pinch? Yes, boss. Good. Uh, please, go on. Okay, then you can expect to save about 10 to 20% on reduced spare parts inventory. Right. So, O'Toole, what's our spare parts inventory? Uh, I'm not really sure. Maybe $3 million? Okay, we'll be conservative. 10% of that is $300,000. Plus the interest and overhead costs saved on that figure another $90,000. Got that, Mr. Controller? Yes, boss. Then you can count on increased labor productivity. We went from 50 to 60%. Well, great. That's an improvement of 10% in labor productivity. O'Toole, what's that worth? Our, our labor costs are uh, four hundred thousand dollars. Okay, so I know about... forty thousand dollars. Ah, good, you're catching on. Finally, you can factor in faster plant turnarounds. We found a savings equal to about two percent. That sounds too small to calculate right now, since we don't really have figures that are all that accurate. So, what do we have up till then, Mr. Controller? About four hundred ninety thousand dollars and change. Hmm, not bad. Not bad. Cutting costs by half a million dollars a year? I think that's pretty darn good myself. What do you think, O'Toole? Uh, I think it's great, Mr. Big. Oh, me too. Now, in addition to being cost-effective, there are a few other features which convinced us that Hewlett-Packard had the right solution for us. Oh, really? Like what? Well, for one thing, we really like the ability to customize the software to suit our own needs. We can add, change, and delete items for the database. We can modify individual screens to suit our own special requirements. We can tailor-make our hard copy reports to include all the information we really need to see. But don't you need a lot of expert programming help to do all that? Well, with the competition's products, yes. You would need an expert to fiddle around with the programmed instructions, usually at an additional cost, too, but not with the HP solution. The beautiful thing about Hewlett-Packard's customization feature is that after a little basic training, we can all do it ourselves without having to change a single line of the programming source code. Wow, I'll bet uh, being able to customize the software like that gives you an amazing amount of power and flexibility. You're absolutely right. Believe me, I've researched the market quite thoroughly, and no competitor offers anything close to the customization features from Hewlett-Packard. Well, how about service and support? How can we be sure that we won't get left high and dry? I agree that uh, that could be a problem with some companies, but not with Hewlett-Packard. HP has a worldwide reputation for excellence. They sell, service, and support computer applications in manufacturing plants around the globe. Why do you think that such a large company can help you in your own shop? We think that Hewlett-Packard is drawing upon its experience with customers throughout the world to design the factory of the future. We believe that by selecting the HP solution, we've entered into a relationship with a company that truly understands our needs and can work with us in a long-term partnership. Well, all that sounds well and good, but how did it translate into real terms for you? Uh, what does it all mean? Yeah, what kind of support do they actually provide? The HP support system's tremendous. They call it HP Assist, and they're not fooling. What an assist it is. Well, every company claims to have a good support system. What makes HP Assist so different? How did they go about bringing you online? HP Assist treated the implementation of their maintenance management solution as a three-phase project to be managed by our people under the direction and guidance of an experienced HP representative. In the first phase, HP Assist 
helped us get a clear picture of our specific needs and provide a time frame for implementing the HP system. Well, I'll bet your normal manufacturing operation got thrown out of whack for a while. No, not really. Things move along uh, quite smoothly without disrupting our day-to-day -day operations at all. Now, in the second phase, the HP rep trained our project team with the skills necessary to implement the application's package in our particular setting. The rep gave our key people an overview of the implementation process and developed a detailed plan for bringing us online. Were the project team members the only people involved in the implementation at that time? Oh, no. Uh, virtually everyone was involved. With the rep's guidance, we developed an education plan for the entire company, all the way from the plant manager through the technicians, the craftspeople and the clerical staff who got to be the primary end users. I like that plan. Seems like a great way to get people motivated at an early stage. That's right, Your Honor. Everyone got so psyched up to get online with the new system that for several weeks we felt like we were about to have a baby. <laughs> well, how did you finally learn how to use the system to your advantage? In the third and final phase, the HP representative assisted our project team in breaking down the implementation process into the appropriate milestones. Then the rep guided us in putting the pieces into place step by step. Uh, didn't you ever have to go for more specialized training on how to use the system? Mm, sure, but during this time, our project team members attended product training at an HP facility, where we also learned how to customize the software to our own particular needs. What I especially appreciated was that throughout all these phases and afterwards, Hewlett Packard was always there, holding our hand while also teaching us how to walk by ourselves. Oh, hey, so far so good. I really like what I hear, friend. But tell me honestly now, if there was one single reason for choosing HP over all the available packages, what would that be? Hmm. Well, there really wasn't any single reason for selecting the Hewlett-Packard solution. There were so many elements we liked. HP's strong feature set, HP's customization capability, the HP Assist program, and HP's worldwide support. C come on now, there must have been something to push you over the edge. There usually is. Well, if we really did have to select one single reason for selecting Hewlett Packard, it would be the fact that HP provides a single vendor solution to all our maintenance problems. That meant we could do all our shopping for hardware, for software, and for support in one place. To us, that comprised a true maintenance solution. And that's why we concluded that Hewlett Packard had the right solution for us. Computer Central to Maintenance. PMs are now due on all two horsepower motors throughout the plant. Please call your office. Thank you. Whoops, gotta run. Firefighting's the nature of the business, you know. You have to respond to the preventive maintenance calls to avoid fighting brush fires and conflagrations later on. Well, I hope I've helped you some. Oh, yeah, quite a lot. Good. I know what it's like to have a manual system, and I'm glad I never have to go back to that mess again. Well, i got to get back to work. Good luck. See you around. Wow, that was fantastic. I never realized you were such a dreamer, O'Toole. <laughs> to tell the truth, neither did I. I. I mean, I've been dreaming about us getting a computer solution. I, I guess I just didn't know how to justify buying the right one. So it's, it's all been more of a nightmare until now. Well, I think that's all been taken care of. Gentlemen, if there are no further objections... Uh, no, ma'am. No, Your Honor. I guess not, Your Honor. Good. Then this case is closed. The charge of inefficiency against the maintenance manager of custom-made products is hereby dropped. This court has every confidence that Mr. O'Toole's problems will be over as soon as he gets his HP maintenance management solution. Case dismissed. You're off the hook, O'Toole. All this sounds great to me. First thing tomorrow, I want you to set up a meeting with these Hewlett Packard people. Let's see what kind of deal we can make. Come on, Penny Pinch. Let's go juggle some figures. You bet. This will be fun. I couldn't believe my ears. Mr. Big was sold. The controller, too. Had I just been dreaming, or has somebody actually developed a product that can increase uptime of machinery and equipment, increase labor productivity, increase utilization of spare parts inventory, and increase the efficiency of the maintenance department through better planning and a faster response to emergencies? Whew. Those are benefits any maintenance manager would give his hard hat for. And to have them all neatly bundled in a customizable software package with an outstanding set of powerful features supported throughout the world by a single vendor. Now that was more than I could ever hope for in my wildest dreams. No wonder Mr. Big is sold. So am I. All my fears about not being able to justify the purchase of a computer system were unfounded. 
The costs we're going to save and the improvement in productivity we're going to see really make it all crystal clear. We simply can't afford to be without the HP maintenance management solution any longer. You know, it, it sure is amazing how dreams can turn into reality when you have the right solution, isn't it? There are eight million stories in the naked city. This has been one of them.